Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Earlier today, Astra launched their rocket 0008 from Florida. This was part of the uh, Venture Class Launch Services Demonstration Program, also launching a payload called the Experiment, or sorry, Educational Launch of Nano Satellites. And initially, the launch went very well for Astra. Their booster lifted straight off the pad and headed down range. It picked up a velocity of about four kilometers per second from their new larger second stage. But unfortunately, when it came time to deploy the second stage, that's when things went wrong. And that's what I want to talk you through. We have some footage of this, and it is a int very interesting failure. We're not sure the root cause just yet, but we have a few ideas. So this is what you see just before stage separation. You've got a camera on the left, which is on the rocket, looking up at the second stage inside the fairing. On the right, you have a camera on the second stage looking down into the rocket. These cameras are on opposite sides of the vehicle. So now let's watch it as it happened in the live stream. Things happen very quickly, but watch the second stage going up inside the fairings and just sitting there until the engine ignites and blows the fairings off. Now the second stage flies off and you can see it spinning around, cartwheeling end over end. Now we've seen Astra's booster guidance handle some really, well, abnormal maneuvers, but in this case it doesn't seem able to arrest those rotations around the, the longitudinal axis. Also, if you look on the left camera, you can see little, you know, orange-yellow embers floating up. There's not really a fire in there because they're basically in the vacuum of space, but presumably something has been damaged and there's residual hot stuff coming out of there. Now I want to show you the stuff again in slow motion, but first I want to give you a better idea of what you're seeing by showing you what the fairing looks like from the outside. Outside. This is all footage from an Astra factory tour video that I've slowed down. So you can see that the whole fairing is made of metal, it's aluminium, the ribs are machined, there are these tubular elements that run vertically along it, and then there's aluminium plating on it which is riveted on. So two of these sit on the top of the rocket and underneath them there's a fairly large interstage and the second stage sits down inside that interstage. So for the second stage to launch, it has to actually pop off the fairings first. So now knowing that, let's watch this again. And for context, I'm going to add launch 7, which was successful at the top, and launch 8, the one which we just had today, is at the bottom. So now watching them side by side, the first thing you see is a bit of a sort of jerk as the initial, um, you know, fasteners are released. And then the fairing is supposed to get pushed off. It has these like pistons that are spring loaded that push the fairings apart. That obviously hasn't happened on the bottom. Now with the fairing out of the way, the rocket pushes the second stage up and it does this again with spring loaded pistons, which you can sort of see on the top side. And when the second stage gets far enough away from the first stage that it can light the engine without any blast coming back and affecting the second stage, it will light that engine. Now in the more confined interstage for launch vehicle 8, that rocket exhaust just accumulates and the gas pressure is what blows off those fairings so that it can be finally free. But that is such a violent uh, event that it just sends the vehicle into a tumble and that means the mission is lost. So now let's rewind it and highlight a few events. First of all, we have the initial jerk. And I'm just scrubbing this back and forth and highlighting this latch, which you can see is opening up in the launch seven, but is locked in launch eight. Also, if we highlight the join between the two fairing halves, uh, if you look at the launch seven, you can actually see the fairing at this point has actually opened up a little to the blackness of space. But on H, you can actually see more light has come in. Therefore, it must have opened, but just in a position that we can't see it. So on the other side of that, if you followed that, you know, join across, it must be opening up on the other side. Therefore, we can presume that the latch on that side has actually released So because we can see light. So now we let it run again, and we're going to see those fairing halves separate properly on the top, but fail to do anything on the bottom. Now pay attention to that piston that has extended from the fairing up the top, because I don't think you can see it on today's launch. So now the second stage gets pushed forwards and its motion is cut short in the case of launch vehicle 8. And again, if we ping pong the motion, you can see that when it hits, it seems to knock open a wider section of the fairing. We're not actually seeing out of the fairing. What That is actually a reflection looking through the crack in the fairing. That If you look, the interior of the fairing is actually quite reflective. But the important thing to realize is that several hundred kilograms of second stage getting pushed into this fairing at speed didn't break it open. 
I'm pretty sure the transient force of that impact is significantly higher than the one third of a ton thrust that the Aether engine will get. So what actually blows the fairings off is the pressure of the gas inside the fairing trying to escape. And if we replay the engine ignition watch, the fairing actually goes sideways. It doesn't get pushed forwards as the, as the second stage starts to move forwards. Instead, it gets pushed out sideways and you don't see that piston deployed. So that's a failure of a couple of discrete systems that are required to open the fairing up, but it's not every single thing that was required to release the fairing. So I think that there might have been a, a, like an electrical problem or a pneumatic problem, whatever actuates these devices didn't fully work. So anyway, after blowing the fairings off, for whatever reason, the vehicle starts pitching around. You see it actually initially turns outwards and it's basically pitching end over end. And that's the end of the mission. So it's very much a case of check your staging and Astro's gonna have to have an investigation. They were supposed to be launching the crossover spacecraft and then later in the year, there was a number of launches related to NASA's Tropics program. Those would have flown out of uh, Kwajalein Atoll. I don't know how long this investigation is going to take, but it's unfortunate that it set them back once again. This isn't going to make them go out of business by any means. They have a lot of cash in hand from the whole SPAC process, but it does mean that their stock price took a huge dive. Hopefully they can return to flight quickly and actually launch some real hardware to space. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.